Despite most of the big names being away at the World Cup, the first four weeks of the Aviva Premiership certainly hasn't lacked for passion and drama. Last weekend saw Saracens back to their best as they racked up 50 points at Welford Road. And Harlequins remain the only unbeaten team in the tournament as they got out of jail with a late win against Worcester. But arguably the surprise package so far has been the Exeter Chiefs, having picked up three wins out of four and sitting third in the table. And that's where we are today with the Chiefs as they prepare to take on Saracens. Welcome to Aviva Behind the Badge. Today we chat to Exeter's Chief Executive Tony Rowe about the club's aspirations and future plans of expansion. We go behind the scenes with Rob Baxter as he gives us an insight into the season so far and the Chiefs' great start. And it's time for the boys to see if they can top the leaderboard in this week's Player Challenge. We're here with Tony Rowe. Uh, Tony, we saw last weekend your team dispose of two-time Heineken Cup champions, Wasps. How proud are you of your team, how far they've come in such a short time? Immensely. That was an awesome game. You know, the lads went out there and they showed total commitment and came away with the, with the, uh, with the scores, you know. It was brilliant. And we've seen the success on the pitch grow in the last couple of years. And now there's talks of plans developing the stadium and the training facilities. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Our ambition is to become a top four club in the Premiership, competing in Europe for the European Cup. So we need to grow the stadium up to 20,000 capacity and grow our conference and banqueting business. So we have a seven year plan. Uh, to achieve that. So in an ideal world, world, where would you like to see this team in seven years? Seven years? Uh, I'd like the Heineken Cup in the trophy cabinet and uh, and, and Sandy Park will be finished. And looking forward to this weekend, you're hosting Saracens, the champions. Yeah. How much of a thrill around Exeter is that to be playing in such a big fixture? Well, that'd be fantastic. I mean, you know, the, the ticket sales are going really well. But for the guys, again, stepping up again, uh, taking on the Premiership champions, it's going to be a big a big call this weekend, but I'm confident the lads will go out and give their all and, you know, they can only do their best and that's all we need to do, Peter. If they do their best every time, that's all you can expect from them. OK, well, good luck this weekend, Tony. Thank you very for much. For the rest of the season. Thank you. Well, Rob, thanks for joining us. Um, you've had a great start to the season, three wins in four games. If I offered you that in August, would you have taken it? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And and I think the, the target we set ourselves was just to be a bit better as often as we could, and we've managed to achieve that. And are you setting targets for your, for your team in terms of the season? Can you start talking about Heineken Cup rugby here at Sandy Park next season? No, no, we, we don't. We genuinely, I think people get surprised when we don't set a season, we don't set a season goal, and we don't. We, we said to the guys, let's just aim to be a bit better. I think it's very important with a, with a, a relatively young premiership group uh, in experienced terms that you don't kind of heap pressure on them in any way. Well, you mentioned experience of, of players, but from coaches as well, although yourself, Ali Heath or Ricky Pello have experience, you don't have that much experience at coaching at premiership level. Do you think that matters? Yes, I think it helps, but I think we're very much like the team, you know, we're, we're looking to, to improve as we go along and, and trying to get a bit better isn't just down to the players, that's down to us as well. Uh, I think we feel we're learning a lot of things, but, but I think we hold that in our favour. Uh, we see it as a strength that these players are getting better with their exposure to the Premiership. It's a strength that as coaches we're hopefully getting better by exposure to the Premiership. These are the things that are driving us forward and hopefully you know, keep us on this upward curve for one at the moment. This club seems to have a really shrewd recruitment policy, taking players that maybe other clubs haven't heard of and turning them into uh, Premiership stars. Is that something you're going to take full responsibility for or do you have help in that area? We all, we all work at it, all the coaching staff here. We do watch a hell of a lot of video. You know, we take recruitment probably as one of the biggest parts of, of the job. Um, but I think that's primarily because we've, we've had to be very good at it over a period of time. You know, when you're in the championship, any championship coach will tell you, you you're kind of dragging a squad together from all over the world a lot of the time. And, You've got to make the pennies pennies matter, you know, and it's it's important you get value for every pound you spend, and we've been used to doing that, and it's something we we still like to think we're getting now, uh, and of course we're also prepared to look far and wide, and and we kind of know the kind of players that fit in into that kind of a culture that we've had to have for a number of years. Now we well documented the club with its military links. We see the team on the pitch plays to structure, well disciplined team. 
What I want to know is which of the players are, are harder than others to, uh, to, to, to jump into line that you need extra managers? Uh, not too many of them, to be honest. I think we've got that nice blend. I mean, I think the, the perfect scenario is you have 15 different characters who all decide to, to join in because they get the best out of each other and it gives them the best chance to do well. And I think that's what we've got. You know, they are a bunch from pretty much all over the world. They are different characters. You know, they don't spend time together um, because they have to. You know, they spend time together because they want to. And, and looking forward to this weekend, Rob. You're, you're facing the champion Saracens. Great thrill to be hosting them at Sandy Park. Where do you see this game going? Now, you know, we'll meet it head on. We'll we'll pick the best team we can, uh, and we'll go at it as hard as we can for as long as we can. And if we do that, just as in any other game in the Premiership, you take it on the chin and, and you walk away and you move on. And that, that's what we'll do this weekend. I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for your time, Rob. Thanks very much. Well, I'm here with a few of the Exeter players after training. Tommy Johnson, Neil Clark, Mark Foster, Hayden Thomas. Thanks for joining us, fellas. Um, Tommy, start with you. But a great start to the season. Three wins out of four. You must be pleased with that. Yeah, over the moon. Um, we we want, really wanted to improve from last year. Um, and especially the win against Wasps, I think we were sort of going in the right direction. So, as you say, three from four. We're sort of third in the table and uh, things are good at the moment. And Clark, you started the season with a bang, with a big win at Leicester after getting so close last season. Was that a happy bus home? Certainly was a few mineral waters on the way back, I think. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, one thing that we focused on this year is that we're trying to get better. And obviously, like you say, to get a win up there this year at Welford Road, not only is it a tough place to go, uh, but also uh, it was better than last year. So to come away with the four points from there, we're, yeah, we're really happy. So nice, quiet bus. And Fozzy, uh, you know, coming home, we speak about coming home, you're two from two at home. What is it about playing at Sandy Park that brings the best out of the Chiefs? I don't know, I think a lot of Premiership sides are very good at home. You know, we're lucky to have a fantastic facility here and a really good crowd behind us. Um, all the guys live locally with each other and the families are really close. So you know, when we're, when we're close here like this, all the families come along, the kids come down, make it a real special day for everyone. And we've got a big performance for everyone at home. And Hayden, we know the extra Chiefs like to have a good time, a drink after, uh, after a big win. Who's in charge? Who's the secretary in charge of social events at the club? No, Brett Sturgis just leads it. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's a... Uh, yeah. One in a million, as you'd say. <laughs> <laughs> and Tommy, the, most of the forwards here at, at uh, Exeter are pretty rough and ready. But you're sitting here, well-groomed individual, tan straight off the coat d'azur. <laughs> is, is this something that comes naturally or something that you work at? I think it's, I think it's part of my German heritage. <laughs> um, There's rumours of nine-minute suntans coming out. I would happily, I would happily take one if I, if I thought I needed one. And Fozzy, you've got, you got guys from all over the world here at uh, Exeter. It must be some strange habits coming out. Any worth noting? Quite <laughs> uh, you're looking, you're looking yeah. at Hayden here. No, 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 no. Hayden's, Hayden's got no weird habits. He's blushing. No, he's he's blushing. blushing. There's, there's all sorts of things. You know, like you say, we're lucky to have a really diverse squad. Uh, we've got a lot of boys, like Polynesian guys. Who like to, who've got their like a, strange things they like to do sometimes around games and to celebrate and things like that. But you know, I think. Like, like uh, TJ said uh, earlier, you know, we're a real tight-knit group of boys and there's loads of different characters and as a result, you know, we all bond over common things and one of them is rugby and other ones, you know, getting together after games and, you know, sort of like letting our hair down. OK, well, thanks for the interview, boys. Now we're off to the serious business of the Player Challenge. Right, gents, you've got a minute to win it. Good luck. Off you go. Oh! oh. What? Yeah, that's, that's one. one. That's one. Oh! oh. Rimshot. Some more ice cream. Get Oh! Yes! Yes! That's it! Two! Oh! Fucking! Oh, going, I'm going! Oh! Yes! Three! Yes! Oh! Yes! 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 Okay, guys, you've got 10 outstanding, top of the table, Hayden. Your heart's working as hard as you've worked today. How do you reckon it did, Tommy? Outstanding, great teamwork and great, uh, great throwing from Clark if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Chiefs certainly seem to be in good spirits and enjoying life at the top of the Premiership. And with things going so well on the pitch and with big plans for development of Sandy Park, perhaps it won't be long until this place is known as the best in the West. Don't forget, you can catch up with your team right here on Aviva Behind the Badge.